It's being called the biggest crisis in Europe in the 21st century, and it is growing by the hour. It is the sudden occupation of Crimea in southern Ukraine by Russian forces in nondescript uniforms. And the source of that quote is the British Foreign Secretary, William Haig, who turned up today in Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, in a show of solidarity with that country's newly formed pro-Western government. Secretary of State John Kerry is due in Kiev tomorrow. Today, Vice President Biden spoke with the Russian Prime Minister, urging a quick pullout of the Russian forces, the entry of international monitors, and dialogue with Ukrainian leaders. At last report, 10 Ukrainian military bases in the pro-Russian Crimean Peninsula were surrounded by thousands of Russian fighters. And though the standoff so far has been mostly peaceful, now comes the ultimatum. Russia's Black Sea Fleet is warning Ukrainian troops in Crimea to surrender all out by 5 a.m. tomorrow. That's 10 p.m. Eastern time here in America or face attack. Earlier, the Ukrainian prime minister vowed never to give Crimea away. And a former prime minister told CNN that Moscow plans to take it. Literally several minutes ago, the uh, Russian Duma has started uh, uh, listening to uh, the draft of the law of annex annexion of Crimea from Ukraine. It's only a uh, question of time when it be voted. We all know that uh, votes in Duma will be found. That's why Russia is uh, 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 escalating the crisis now. And the world should understand, should realize that uh, Ukraine on its own won't be able to solve this issue with Russia on its own. Absolutely not possible. Well, it is not at all clear what the world can or will do to make Russia pay for this power grab. But check out the price that you personally are paying. Wall Street, definitely spooked by what's going on, by the prospects of what some are saying could be a new Cold War or worse. Blue chips sinking at the opening bell and your 401k likely sinking right along with them. Got much more on that in a moment, but first I want to get to my CNN colleagues in the region, Matthew Chance in Kiev and Phil Black in Moscow. So Phil, first off, talk about this newest development, this ultimatum. It certainly did ratchet things up. Yeah, indeed, that's right, Ashley. So what we understand from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, and this is the most significant of a number of ultimatums that Russian military ha have given over the last 24 hours or so, or really throughout this crisis, but we understand that the chief of the Black Sea Fleet, the Russian Black Sea Fleet, boarded a Ukrainian vessel in Sevastopol Harbor and basically said, you've got three choices. You can swear allegiance to the new Crimean authorities, you can just simply surrender, or you can face attack. At the moment, uh, Ukrainian defense officials haven't confirmed for us that there is a time attached to this deadline, but they say that they have been receiving numerous deadlines in recent days, and they believe that this is part of an ongoing psychological tactic by Russian authorities, by the Russian forces, to try and drive them into surrendering and giving up their arms, Ashley. And then, Phil, what about this, this uh, new draft legislation that's being reported um, out of Russia right now, effectively changing the rules, saying that we can annex Crimea because there's really no consensus on international law, among other things. Is this going to be uh, debated or is this effectively, it, it's just a fait accompli at this point? Well, at the moment, it, it's still at its early stages. Uh, but what this draft law does or draft amendment to a law does is outline the process by which a country or part of a country can seek to be annexed by the Russian Federation. And it talks about a scenario where a sovereign state is breaking down, there is no central government control, people's rights are not being protected, and under those circumstances a country or part of that country can indeed hold a referendum and vote to join uh, the Russian Federation. And under those circumstances that would then become uh, a legally binding thing that Russia uh, could agree to. It is, as I say, only uh, at the early stages of a draft. It's going to committee. It's unclear how soon this could come before the parliament. But an explanatory note attached to this legislation makes it very clear that this is absolutely being driven by the events in Ukraine there. What we don't know yet is what sort of support this has from the Kremlin, whether this is something that is really 
being created from the top down, whether President Putin is really calling for this. But I think that if you look at everything that's happening on the ground in Crimea with Russian military control, with Crimean authorities calling for a separatist referendum, and now this move in the Russian parliament, it all means that one way or another, either as an officially annexed part of Russian Federation or perhaps as simply a client state of the Russian Federation, Russia intends to maintain control uh, of the Crimea beyond uh, this initial military uh, operation in that region. Ashley. All right, Phil, stand by for one moment. I want to go uh, to the ground, uh, into Ukraine, to the, to the capital of Kiev. So, Matthew Chance, perhaps you could just give me the feel for uh, someone else uh, in our, in our, among our colleagues called this a bit of a low-key invasion in Crimea, which is a very unusual description for what's going on right now, especially since we just had this very frightening ultimatum issued by Russia. The reaction right now in Ukraine, is it the calm before the storm or is it the calm before the inevitable? I think it has been very low key indeed. I mean, in fact, uh, not a shot has been fired really in anger uh, as Russia established its grip militarily uh, over that, that region of Crimea. They've now essentially either surrounded or occupied the key installations, both civilian and military, inside Crimea. They've deployed thousands of their troops inside Crimea as well, and now their military forces far outnumber. Uh, the, the numbers that the Ukrainian military in Crimea would be able to muster. So they've essentially established their de facto control over that entire area. Throughout the course of the past 24 to 36 hours, various groups, the Russian army, uh, the pro-Russian militias have been going to various military bases around uh, UK, around uh, Crimea and issuing these ultimatums saying that you've got to surrender or defect or face a storm as they call it. Um, this has been taking place throughout as I say the last several hours last day or so. Um, there's not a general uh, deadline according to the, the Ukrainian authorities as far as they understand it that would mean you know beyond this point there will be a general attack on your military installations but certainly it's a threat they're taking seriously they regard it as you know a, a, a psychological uh, sort of sense of warfare, uh, the, these, these, uh, these ultimatums that are being issued. But yes, a very delicate situation. The ball is very much now, I think, in the Russian court as well, because they've established this control over Crimea. Will they now look at other areas in the east of Ukraine that are also Russian speaking, that are also ethnic Russian uh, majority areas and say, well, you know, these are our rightful areas as well. Maybe we're going to go into there. All right, Matthew Chance uh, reporting live for us in Kiev and also Phil Black in Moscow. Thank you both. Uh, stay tuned, though, because things are changing uh, moment by moment. So we'll continue to tap our resources that CNN has all around the world, including right there on the ground in those key regions. Now, in the crisis in Ukraine, the ultimatums and the threats are flying in the world financial markets. They are paying attention to the tune of, I don't know, down 226 on the Dow. It's critical for Americans, even if you don't pay attention to this region, you pay attention at the pump and at the grocery store. And Christine Romans is going to break down how this affects you actually today. It's coming up next.